Brewers are on their way home, but the Mets are only halfway home on their 10-game road trip. They dropped the opener of their series in San Francisco last night after splitting four games in San Diego. Now it's game two of the series with the Giants. Mets baseball is next. trip to San Francisco means a chance for the great Willie Mays to hold court while his godson Barry Bonds tries to get his home run swing going again. Moise Salou did the damage for the Giants last night in their 6-2 win. And the Mets try to right themselves in San Francisco tonight as they try to find their struggling offense. Jose Reyes tries to fight his way out of the slump as the Mets and Giants play the middle game of three in San Francisco. At AT&T Park, the New York Mets play the San Francisco Giants. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to San Francisco. Gary Cohen and Keith Hernandez with you tonight as the Mets and Giants play the middle game of three. The Giants won 6-2 to two last night, and the game hinged on a couple of intentional walks that Willie Randolph ordered to Barry Bonds, both times with a runner at first base, both times it backfired. Well, in the first inning, he walked intentionally walked Barry Bonds, fell behind the count here, and didn't want to deal with him. Well, Alou came up behind him. One and two count, tried to come inside Tom Glavin and didn't get it there. Three nothing Giants. And then in the seventh inning, the situation presented itself again. Well, this was a first and third situation. You're, you're intentionally walking Barry and putting another runner in scoring position. And voila, Mr. Alou, a base hit up the middle on a very fine at bat, ball game blown open. Now, Barry Bonds has been intentionally walked more than twice as many times as any player in the history of baseball, but he's 42 years old. His knees and his elbow were a little creaky. He's hit only one home run this year. At what point do managers stop intentionally walking him in unconventional situations? Well, it remains to be seen. I'm not the manager, but I never agreed with, even when Barry was in his prime with this early in the ball game, first, first, first through fifth inning, walking anybody intentionally. He's still got a lot of ball game left. Last night, if Barry hit a home run, it's a 2 nothing ball game. You walk him, and Aluba hits a bomb, it's 3 nothing. So I've never agreed with that. Maybe later in the game, yes, of course. But, you know, Barry right now is hurting. You know, maybe they should pitch to him. Also hurting right now is the Mets' offense. The Mets have lost five of their last seven games, mostly because they haven't been scoring very many runs. Well, they have not been scoring runs, that's for sure. And it all started when Carlos Beltran went down with the hamstring. And he's been in the middle of things. And, you know, the, the best hitter in the ball club thus far, and the most consistent, obviously, has been the first baseman, Carlos Delgado. And Xavier Nady has also hit the ball very well. But everybody else collectively has struggled, and it has been a real, real struggle for this club to get runs on the board. The numbers are stark with Beltron as opposed to without Beltron. Does he mean this much to the lineup, or has it been a coincidence? Well, we know in his quotes that he said, I'm not the guy that's going to carry the team on my back. I'm the guy that can do everything I can do to help the team win. He walks a lot. He leads this team still in walks after being out over a week, and he's still ahead in walks, leading the team in walks. He's, he scores runs. He's in the middle of things. He's, to my opinion, with his speed, he's kind of the, when Reyes is not getting on base, he's the guy that ignites the offense. So the Mets with the loss last night, now 4-17 and 17 in this ballpark. And it seems every time the Mets come to the West Coast, it's a struggle. Well, I've played uh, my, my personal experiences with St. Louis and New York. Uh, it was always tough to come here and win early in my career. And the only way, and there's no reason for it, but the only way you can win is to come out here collectively as a team and hit a West Coast trip and win. And then the monkey's off your back and you're going, well, what was that all about? You know, the, the, I can't wait to come back out here again. Well, the one thing that has been going right for the Mets during this stretch has been their pitching. They still have the number one ERA in the National League. Chris Conner talked with Mets pitching coach Rick Peterson. We'll hear from him when we come back. Here in San Francisco, the Mets and Giants getting set for the middle game of their three-game series. It's been a cool couple of days here in San Francisco for the Mets. Rick Peterson leading the number one pitching staff in the National League statistically. And Chris Cotter caught up with Rick before the game tonight. Rick, you're about 20 games into the season. How do you how do you evaluate your your starting staff right now, and, and what are you most pleased with? Well, I think more than anything else, our starting staff is getting us for the most part deep into the games. 
And it's really critical when you start the season that you get your starting staff solidified, get guys on turn on a regular basis. And, you know, fortunately, we've only had one rain out, which is, which is also critical. You know, obviously, Pedro's been outstanding. You know, Tommy's been tremendous. You know, Trax has had a couple good games for us. Bannister has clearly demonstrated he can battle through some adversity. And, and I think as he takes a deep breath and exhales, I think he's going to start to relax and settle in a little bit. You know, and Victor hasn't really got off to a very good start so far, and, and we expect, you know, him to get back on track the way he's capable of pitching for us. You know the stuff of, of those last two that you speak of, Bannister and, and Victor. So how do you how do you prepare them maybe for the mindset of, of becoming better and improving every start? Well, the bottom line is that it's it's you take each hitter as a separate game, and you got to focus on executing one pitch at a time. And the frustration is that. When they have their preparation, their pregame warm-ups and their bullpens, we actually call them rehearsals, they're outstanding. And the only thing that you could ever expect from a coaching standpoint is the same quality. It's the old Hoosiers that, you know, they took them to the state tournament. It's, you know, it's 10 feet high, you know, it's 60 feet, 6 inches in a bullpen as it is here. And, you know, you, you, you start to have to get a transition of the quality of, of location and the ability to execute pitches in a bullpen and have that translate into, into the game as you cross the white lines. And it's just that simple. You know, they have to execute the pitches that they're capable of executing, and, and they clearly execute them on a different setting, you know, in the bullpen. So, you know, it's critical that they settle in and, and for us to have the kind of success that we're capable of having. Your bullpen's been outstanding as well. Are you in the same boat as every pitching coach in baseball, just trying to make sure that you don't overuse them early in the season? Well, it, it, well, the answer is yes. Overuse them throughout the course of the season. You know, when, when you look at, at pitch counts, you look at pitch counts for starters in three-game cycles. When you look at, at relievers, you look at pitch counts in seven-day cycles, and that seven days turns over every day. So mm -hmm. today, go back seven days. Tomorrow, go back seven days from there to make sure that, that, that they don't get out of that cycle and they get their rest and recovery days. The rest and recovery days are as critical as the activity days. So, you know, just to make sure that they all stay sharp, they all get regular work, and, and we've been able to do that. And Willie's done a great job of getting all those guys in games. One more pitching note about a future Met. Mike Pelfrey, last year's number one draft pick, today was promoted from single-A St. Lucie to double-A Binghamton. He'll make his first double-A start Saturday. Keith, he's coming awfully quickly. Well, they're going to move him up, and they're not going to rush him up here or anything like that. He's a first year in, 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 major, in minor league baseball. It's a good move for him to get to double-A quickly as a college uh, draftee. And they've been coming awfully quickly, those college draftees, back to the major leagues out of the draft. It's the Mets and the Giants from AT&T Park in San Francisco back with the first pitch in just a moment. Here in San Francisco Mets and Giants about to start game two of their three game series. Jose Reyes leading off against 31 year old right hander Jamie Wright. And Reyes takes the strike. You look at Wright's record there so far pitched very well. I say he's got a great command of his breaking ball and that has been the difference. And he has bounced around for quite some time. Reyes bounces one toward the middle. Vizquel can't get there, and Jose Reyes leads off the opening inning with a ground ball single to center. Just his sixth hit in his last 42 at-bats. Well, we're talking about Jose hitting the ball on the ground. It's a sinker ball in a good spot. Stays back. Hits the ball on the ground with results. And here's the Chevrolet Mets lineup facing Jamie Wright tonight. Paul LaDuca to see his career numbers against Wright. Andy Chavez again in center field with Carlos Beltran not starting any of the three games in this series will be reevaluated on Friday. Here's Loduca. Let's we'll see if Reyes tries to swipe one. And Wright checks in on him. Reyes had a stolen base last night, his seventh of the year. He's tied for second in the National League with those seven steals. Well, when he gets on base, you know he's going get to get a stolen base. Loduca struggling on this road trip, two for 18. But he takes a lot of pitches in this situation and gives Reyes. That was close. Very close play. Wright has about as good a right-hander's pickoff move as anybody in the game. And he almost got Reyes there. So he came back. He didn't get him leaning. That was close. As I repeat myself. Hmm. Very close. Duca takes the fastball inside. Now, when you're in a situation like this, Gary, when you're hitting, and you know, as a third hitter, I had Lou Brock and Gary Templeton and hitting in front of me. I took pitches for them, and you just 
love it when you take a pitch to give them a chance to steal. They, you, they throw balls to you so you get ahead in the count. This is a tough combination to steal again with Wright and Mike Matheny. Right, as we mentioned, with a good move, and Matheny, gold glove catcher, behind the plate. So the Giants playing straight up against Laduca. There goes Reyes. And Matheny can't throw him out. It goes into center field. Reyes takes off for third. And Wynn will not make a throw. And Reyes winds up on third base with nobody out. His eighth steal of the year. And then charge an error to Matheny, allowing him to get to third. Well, this is what happens when Reyes gets on base. This is a good pitch to throw. The throw is just low in the dirt. The catcher, it's not in the dirt. It's up the line into the runner. It's a terrific jump. He has such great acceleration. Would like to see him slide feet first, but he's not going to do it. Giants will concede a run on a ground ball anywhere except third base. And Laduca takes 3 0. Oh. So the Mets trying to get something started quickly here against Wright with Carlos Delgado on deck. Last night they didn't have a base runner until the sixth inning against Matt Kane. Felipe Alou. Giants manager looking on as Luduka bounces one up the middle base hit center field. Reyes trots home with the first run of the game and two batters in the Mets have a one nothing lead. Well it's just amazing when Reyes gets on base how the Mets click. He's now scored 17 runs despite his troubles offensively. And that's a sinker ball or pitcher sinker ball pitcher is going to get ground balls that's hitting him right up the middle. Two identical base hits. So the stolen base helps produce a run, and now Delgado will bat with Loduca at first and nobody out. And tonight, the Giants don't shift quite as far as they did last night against Delgado. Ball one. Probably they're not shifting as strongly is because it's a double play situation. And now you can see the shortstop is going to the second baseman so much in the pull there's no way he can get there for a double play if the ball's hit to the left side of the infield it's going to be a if it's hit to the third baseman it's a five six three double play. And Elgato takes high and so Wright who has been walking people early in the season and getting away with it 12 walks in 21 innings coming in has been behind the last two hitters. So the Mets trying to get to right early. Well clubs have hit only 192 off him. That's the that's the difference. On 2 and 0 Delgado checks the swing and he stopped it in time. Third base umpire Eric Cooper gives him the pass and now it's 3 and 0 to Delgado. There's the sinker ball. It's up and when the sinker ball gets up see how it flattens out. It gets no it doesn't get the sink it just runs. Delgado took a rare collar last night. On this road trip, 0 for 4. And Bill Miller, the home plate umpire, taking some heat from Felipe Alou. Felipe barking at Miller, but it wasn't Miller who called the check swing, it was Cooper down at third. Oh, 3 0 to Delgado. And there's ball, a strike. <laughs> Looked like ball four. Looked like the same, <laughs> looks like the same spot. Now this is a high. See, it's up in the strike zone. It stays flat right at the right at the belt. Looked outside to me, but makeup call. <laughs> it's three and one. Oh, is he, is he intimidated? I doubt it. There's a base hit into right center field. The Duca will go to second and stops. So three straight hits for the Mets to open the ball game. Still nobody out, and two aboard for David Wright. Well, the four defense sets up for the Giants. As you can see that in the first 18 games, they made seven errors. Last night, they made three and came out on top. That's very rare. So, Negro Vizcaino, Vizquel, Feliz in the infield, Bonds, Wen, Alou in the outfield, Matheny behind the plate. It's basically the same, it is the exact same lineup and positioning as last night. Two of those errors last night were Aaron pickoff throws by the young pitcher, Matt Kane. We pitched a terrific ball game. He's going to be a star. Well, he was impressive. Well, here's David Wright. Speaking of young stars, with two aboard and nobody out, Mets already have a run home here in the first. And he 
Wright takes a strike from Jamie Wright. Nothing wrong with this matchup. <laughs> Wright is just four for his last 29 after going 0 for 4 last night. He's been a little bit of a down spell, but not terrible. Pops this one up. The infield fly rule will be called. So the batter's out. And this guy you know, grabs it, and that's the first out of the game. David's been hitting a lot of balls in the air lately, and that's what he he needs to in BP. There's no money in the air. Look at that flat sinker. It's boring in on his hands. Just kind of beat him in. And you see the follow through is an uppercut. You stay level. You've got a shot to muscle it out to the opposite field or up the middle. You swing up, it's just a pop up or a lazy fly ball. Easier said than done. So Wright, who generally makes his living on the ground, gets his first out in the air. And Cliff Floyd will step in. And Floyd just four for his last 31. You go up and down this lineup, and there aren't a whole lot of hot hitters to find. Over the back, foul ball. Just Cliff. barely missed an extra base hit. Cliff cannot buy a break on this road trip. He has hit the ball so hard on this road trip and has nothing to show for it. Hardly anything to show for it. Hits this ball. It's a bullet, and that is not fouled by much. And you can see Sandy Alomar Jr. was wanting a fair call there. Jerry Davis, the first base umpire and crew chief, right on top of the play. Looked like the right call. Here's Sandy. Oh, and one to Floyd. If this one toward the hole, this guy you know, runs it down and throws out Floyd for the second out. This guy you know, was all over the place defensively last night, filling in for the injured Ray Durham. And he makes a nice play going to his left there, two away. Well, we know Jose Vizcaino. He's obviously played with the Mets a long career. He has always been a defensive stalwart. So here is Xavier Nady. Nady had a couple of hits last night, and significantly, they both went to right field. And Nady now at 333, five homers, 10 RBIs. He's got two in scoring position with two down. With a run already home. And takes the curveball for a strike. Oh, my goodness, that had to curve around the plate. <laughs> so, right had Nady bailing out on that first pitch. See the catcher's going to set up away, of course. And he's fishing. Oh, and two to Nady. Well, Jamie Wright will be thrilled if he gets through this opening inning with just one run scoring. Well, it wasn't a uh, now. Delgado hit that ball like a shot to right center field. And the one I like Laduca in the second position, but when you hit him there, you lose a little speed. He's not a guy that can go first to third. Oh, two to Nady, lifted to center field. Win has room. And Jamie Wright escapes the first inning with just one run scoring. A run on three hits. We go to the bottom of the first. one nothing New York. Mets baseball on Sportsnet New York is being brought to you by ChevyOffers.com, the presenting sponsor of Baseball Night in New York. By Rico, move your ideas forward with Rico dependability. And by Honda.com, see your Honda dealer and discover great values now being offered. Steve Traxel takes them out for his fourth start of the year. Traxel's had a win, a loss, and a no decision in that order. And there you see his numbers. Well, he's not, he's not going to walk anybody. You can see there, that's the important stat there in 17 innings. Four walks, nice strikeouts. See, the lefties are hitting Traxel hard this year. That has not been his norm over his career as Randy Wynn takes a strike. Every year of his career, Traxel has better numbers against lefties than against righties, but early this season, it's gone the other way. Win in a slump right now, 0 for his last 14 after getting off to a hot start. And it's 1 and 1 to Randy Wynn. Wynn came to the Giants last August in a trade from Seattle, and he has loved hitting in this ballpark. Off the fists, 1 and 2. Well, Traxel's 9 and 4 lifetime against the Giants with a nice 2.57 earn run average in 19 games. Last year he was 1 and 0 against the Giants. And that was a spectacular performance in what was his season debut in late August. 
Back to the mound. Traxel uses his six foot five and throws out win one away. Here's the Rico lineup that the Giants will send up against Traxel. Pretty much the same lineup as last night as Dusty moved the bottom of his batting order around, hitting with 88th and Feliz six tonight. But it was Moise Salou who did the damage last night with five RBIs in the Giants' six to two win. Here's Omar Vizquel, who celebrated his 39th birthday yesterday with a one for three night. He takes a strike. Vizquel off to a terrific start. That 387 batting average, second in the National League. Scored 15 runs in the season. It's it to center. Chavez, two away. So two up and two set aside. When Traxel came to can't to uh, this ballpark last year as we look at the defense that's brought to you by Jeep four errors this season and Wright has the most on the team at third base he had that three error game don't forget in that Atlanta series the lineup is pretty much the same as last night as a matter of fact it is exactly the same the defensive setup is Lance Necro hitting third in the order son of Joe takes a strike Necro hitting a 269 has a five game hitting streak going a couple of hits last night including a double. And there is Barry Bonds looming on deck. I like this kid Necro what I've seen so far of him and. Just the book on him is he can't stay healthy and he gets these little. Not major injuries but little. Dings as we'd call them Nick's. Somehow finds himself out of the lineup. He was a third baseman in the minor leagues. Now playing first base almost exclusively and he lines one the other way toward that right field corner and it's right near that 309 mark in fair territory. Nady with the throw to second and he's out at second base. Nady played the carom perfectly and he guns down Negro trying to stretch it into two and that ends the first inning. What a throw. We go to the second one nothing New York. We go to the second inning in San Francisco. The Mets with a one nothing lead. Xavier Nady with a terrific throw gunning down Lance Necro to end that bottom of the first. Kaz Matsui leads off the second against Jamie Wright and he bounces one toward the hole and that gets by Viscaino and into right field. So the Mets have their fourth hit early on against Jamie Wright. Well here's the play Nady made in the bottom half of the first to end the inning played it perfectly off the wall. Just it took this kind of throw to get him. Look at that one hop and nice play by Nico to force the throw. It took a perfect throw to get him. Just a real strong fine strong throw and a fine play by the X man. I was talking with Nady earlier today. You know he played his college baseball just up the road in Berkeley. In fact there was a, a college baseball game on this field this afternoon between Cal and the University of San Francisco as Matsui is picked off. Now we talked about Wright maybe having the best right handers pickoff move in the game. And he guns down Matsui. Well we can't tell there because of Sandy Alomar's shoulder. Here's a better angle. He's got a quick move is right and he did get him. And Chavez takes a strike. It's very deceptive. It's sneaky. That'd be the word. You always watch the, the foot on the rubber. Which would be the right foot of the pitcher. He has to step off the rubber on his pickoff the right hander step back to throw to first. One and two to Chavez. Well he nearly picked off Reyes in the first inning. And he gets Matsui. Good breaking ball. Job is able to get a piece of it. So the pitching has stepped up, Gary. We've noticed on this road trip, this is a good, solid break, down and in, breaking sharp. So this isn't the pitching that the Mets saw earlier in the year with. Uh, Washington and help me out here. Florida. I'm drawing a blank. Florida. Thank you. First strikeout for right, two out of nobody on. 
Well, Jamie Wright's kind of a reclamation project. I mean, here's a guy who has kicked around the last number of years, started his career in Colorado, wound up back in Colorado last year where he went 8 and 16. But the numbers will tell you that when he's pitched away from Coors Field, he's actually been pretty good. And Traxel takes a strike. Of course, he broke in back in 96 and played the first four seasons in Colorado. And Traxel lines a base hit. And that's a five hits first time through the batting order against Jamie Wright. Traxel coming coming to bat with two out and nobody on. We looked at this number the other day because remember the game in San Diego where Victor Zambrano had two out and nobody on and the pitcher up and then gave up four runs in that inning. Yes. The last two years there have been almost a thousand situations like that as Reyes swings and misses with two out and nobody on and the pitcher coming up and only three times has a team scored as many as four runs in an inning just to show you how unusual that circumstance was for Zambrano the other day. Oh man. Good curveball by right 0 and 2. Well a hard slider in first pitch off the strike zone. Reyes can't hold up and he drops a backdoor hammer on him. That's a yellow hammer. Slap to third. Deliz hurries the throw and gets Reyes to end the inning. Well, the Mets had two hits, but Matsui got picked off. Middle of the second, 1 0 New York. On to the bottom of the second inning here at AT&T Park, hard by the San Francisco Bay. And in case you're keeping score, this ballpark began existence as Pac Bell Park. They merged. It became SBC Park. They merged. And now it's AT&T Park. One thing that hasn't changed since the park opened, the way the San Francisco fans react to Barry Bonds. There's steroid allegations, perjury allegations, a year of virtual inactivity last year. This is the one place where Barry can still hear cheers. Traxel's done well against Bonds over the years. Only two home runs and 41 at bats. Well below Barry's norm. Fouls the first one off. And Barry went after a first pitch there. He was walked, of course, last night intentionally twice and walked three for the game. He's hitting just 222, but he has a 541 on base percentage because of all the walks. And that's best in the league. And you saw him go after the first ball fastball, trying to sneak one by. Get a fastball. It looks to me, if you look at the most walks right now this year, Adam Dunn, of course, that big monster in Cincinnati, either strikes out or walks or hits a home run right behind him. But it looks to me, if you watch. <laughs> okay. Those are the rubber chickens representing the intentional walks to Barry. Chicken Little. No, he's Chicken Big. <laughs> To deep left field, Floyd going back, and that ball's gone. Barry Bonds with his second home run of the year. Both of them have gone to the opposite field. He now has 710 in his career, four behind Babe Ruth for second all time. And the Giants tie the game at one. It's almost painful watching Bonds circle the bases. Some guys go slow around the bases to show up the opposing pitcher. He goes slow around the bases because look at him. He can barely walk, much less run. It sure looks that way. He ran after some balls pretty good out in left field last night. Maybe a little Academy Award acting there. I don't know, but we know he is in pain. Moise Salute takes the breaking ball, 1 0. And when you go out in this ballpark to the opposite field, now this is the big ballpark. Ball flies better to left than to any other part of the park. But it's interesting because Barry you know, hit his first home run in Colorado to left field, and now he hits his second one here to left field. 2 0 to Alou as Traxel struggling with the curveball. Now 
buried just four behind Ruth and 45 behind Aaron and pain on his face. He doesn't look very healthy. And you know what? He's 42 years old. I wouldn't be shocked if he's coming out of this game. He, he looks like he's in significant pain. And you see the knee brace on that on, on that the right knee. Right there. Three and do I lose. Here's the pitch. Fastball up and away. Nice swing. That's the Barry Bond swing. Goes right with it. Traxel's mistake was he got it up. Three and one to Alou. Here's the trainer. Stan Conti, the trainer, who has become a, a figure now in, in Bonds' fight against perjury charges as Alou takes ball four. We're looking for any signs of pain in the expression in the face. Not there. He's okay there. He's not running very fast. But when he got to home plate and started moving toward the dugout, he was significantly limping, and he clearly is in a good deal of pain. He's had problems with both knees and with his elbow. Pedro Feliz takes outside. So Traxel struggling right now to throw strikes after giving up the home run to Bonds. Well, these are things that happen. I think here he goes back into the trainer's room. I think they're going to put him on ice, get some ice on it. But we'll you start breaking down when you get in your mid to late 30s. He's 42. Last year had three operations on the same knee. There goes Al Lou. Feliz pops it up. And that'll come back out of play. He had the first operation, then he had to have another for an infection in that knee, and then he had a third operation to clean things up. And then he announced this spring that he was up dealing with bone chips in his elbow. So in addition to you know all the off-field issues that Bonds is having to duck around, he's got to deal with all the physical problems that he has. And, you know, as Barry said yesterday, at, at some point, it, it's going to end. At some point, he's just not going to be able to play anymore. But he still has the ability to hit a ball to the ballpark. Heck, last year he played 14 games and hit five home runs. He was hitting them out of every ballpark in Arizona this spring. One and one to Phillies. And Lou falling back into the bag. Traxel trying to right himself. And Feliz takes low. Now you got Feliz, who's an ice cold hitter right now. He's in just 176 for the year and 0 for his last 12. And this is a hitter that generally will chase pitches out of the strike zone, although he has it to this at bat. So Traxel trying to tease him, but now he's 2 and 1. Again, he couldn't get him to offer, and it's three and one. Well, they tried to hit and run in the first pitch in the count. I'm sure they're going to send a Lou here in motion. There's Jose Viscaino on deck. What are the odds Traxel's going to throw over? Twice. We lose. And Alou runs and Feliz fouls it off. So for the second time in the at bat, for the hit and run play on Feliz, fouling it off. And now it's three and two. And if he's running three and one, he's almost certainly going to run three and two. Moise Salou, managed by his dad, Felipe Alou. The sixth father son manager player combination in Major League history. Got him. Oh, just got back. That, if that throws on the bag, he is out. 
If it's lower, he's got him. And you never want to get picked off here. It's 3 2. Make sure the pitcher goes home. It's a place where a left hand throwing first baseman might have gotten an out. A long time for Delgado to get that tag across with the glove on the left hand. I've always said that's a position for a left hander. Three and two to Phillies. Now Lou's on his way, and it's fouled off again. So Alou will come on back. Remember that Moise Alou is 40 years old and has had multiple injury problems to contend with over the course of his career. He's had a lot of calf problems in recent years. Of course, it was probably. 11 or 12 years ago that he suffered that devastating broken leg while he was playing for Montreal. <laughs> he runs. Phillies lifts it to left. Floyd back has room. And that's the first out of the inning and now Lou retreats to first. Phillies just getting under that one one away. And here's Jose Vizcaino. This guy who hasn't hit a whole lot, but he was marvelous at second base last night, filling in for the injured Ray Durham. Durham is not going to start a game in this series. He's got a hamstring problem, a high hamstring problem right behind his knee. And so this guy who filling in for him, and you know, just like the Mets, who are shorthanded in the outfield because of Beltron's absence, the Giants are similarly shorthanded on the infield. Felipe Alou was talking tonight about what he'd do if, if Omar Vizquel had to leave a game for some reason because Vizquel is his only backup shortstop. He's talking about playing Feliz at second and Negro at third and Steve Finley at first. But hoping that he doesn't have to do anything of the kind. And Alou looking like he's a little pained as he goes back to the bag. Giants are an interesting team because they have a lot of older players. They've got some young players. We saw one of them last night in Matt Cain. Good splitter by Traxel, one and one. But they've got you know, Lou, who's 40, and Finley, who's 41, and Bonds, who's 42, and Vizquel, who's 39. Got a lot of guys who are really up there in years, and you always want to worry about injury problems with older players. And when you have a clump of them like that, you could lose them all at once and you've got four or five guys you have to replace on your roster. Of course they also have one of the older managers in the game in Felipe Alou. Toward the middle base hit for Vizcaino. And so the Giants have two men on. There's the third hit off Traxel. Traxel's getting his fastball up a little bit right now. Sports Night, the news and information source for all New York area sports fans. Sports Night covers the stories that New York sports fans care about. 6 p.m., 10 p.m., and 1 a.m. every night, only on Sportsnet New York. Here's Mike Matheny, the Giants catcher. He hit in the sixth spot in the order last night, dropped to the eighth spot tonight by Felipe Alou. And here's another guy. I mean, Matheny, who catches almost every day, is 35 years old. And Traxel gets the breaking ball over. In fact, this is the Giants' 20th game, and Matheny has now started 17 of the 20. That's a lot of games for a guy who's 35 years old. The Giants have always liked to have, in recent years, veteran ball clubs. To right center field, long run for Chavez back in the gap, and he runs it down. Andy Chavez with another terrific play. Tagging at second, late is Alou, the relay throw, and he's out at third base. Matsui with the relay as Alou was late tagging up, and the double play ends the inning. Chavez to Matsui to right, 8 4 5 on the double play, and the inning is over. The home run by Bonds ties the game. But great defense and poor base running by Alou take the Giants out of a bigger inning. Now, despite the obvious pain in his knee, Barry Bonds does stay in the game in left field for the Giants. 
And Moise Salou, who was late coming out of the dugout, will stay in the game in right field after his base running mistake. Well, nice relay throw. Just gets Alou. That was from Kaz Matsui. Nice fundamentals by the Mets. Ball Duca takes ball one. Well, Alou must have thought that that ball was going to fall in. Chavez has to run a long way back in that big gap in right center. And so Alou was late tanking up, and that's what made the play possible. Well, Alou has to come to the right thing coming down halfway. Ball hit deep like that. You're on second base. You don't tag up. You do the right thing right here. Now he reads. Sees it. Now nah, he got caught going back and forth. No need. That's what hurt him. And that's a smart play going back and thinking he can tag up. But you better make sure. Whoa! That one behind Paul Loduca. Didn't appear as though there was any intent from right. Just got away. Well, let's see. Oh, it's a curveball. Of course, you're not going to hit someone with a curveball. The pitch behind you is so tough to react to, isn't it? Well, your initial reaction is to move back, and then you move right into it. When you want to hit someone, you throw it behind them. Didn't work for Sean Estes. He threw it behind Clemens, and he missed. Well, it was a pitcher. They don't know how to get away from the ball, <laughs> especially ones on the other lay that don't hit. Loduca drove in the Mets run with a single to center in the first and he grounds this one to Vizquel. And the 10 time gold glover throws out Loduca one away. So one out and nobody on. Here's Carlos Delgado. Yeah, he's single to right center his first time up. Mets had five singles first time through the batting order against Jamie Wright. But it translated into just one run. And this time they'll put on the full over shift against Delgado with nobody on base. Right, there's no one on base. The other time it was a double play situation. And right works him away. Nine two hit games you see there. He's tied with Soriano, but he's just been superb so far this season. How about Prince Fielder being in that mix? Rookie, just 21 years old, nine multiple hit games already this year. That's pretty impressive. There's David Wright on deck. One and two to Delgado. I've noticed one thing that the pitchers have tried to do with Delgado is is crowd him inside, up and in. There's the old tugboats. And then throw him the off speed pitch low and away. And sometimes it gets him out in front. That's but sometimes he wears it out. So good hitters, you got to crowd. Can't let them lean over the plate. On one and two, he takes the curveball in for a call strike three. Good looking hook from Jamie Wright gets Delgado looking for the second out. Well, this is the old backdoor hook. Catcher set up away, starts outside. The pitter hitter wants to quit on it because it starts three inches outside and boom, breaks in. Well, check out that scoreboard as, as Bill Webb shows us what the National League East did tonight. Marlins lost. Move over. Braves lost. Keep going. Stay out of Phillies, production. Lost. <laughs> And the Nationals lost. And this is the way it's going every day. And you can talk all you want about the standings not meaning anything in April, but everybody else in the division is under 500. And even though the Mets have struggled on this trip and have lost five of seven, they're the only team with their heads above water. Vizquel throws out right, and the Mets are down one, two, three. So Jamie Wright settling in, getting his ground balls. We go to the bottom of the third, one to one. They go to the bottom of the third here in San Francisco. Mets and Giants tied at one. Jamie Wright will lead off against Steve Traxel. Wright two for eight on the year. And he bounces this one to Reyes. One pitch and one retired in the bottom of the third. And Randy Wynn giving Wright some time to get back to the dugout. I know it's early in this game, but both clubs have had opportunities to score more than the runs that they have up on the board. 
Yeah, it happens, but you know, the Mets have left three men on base early in this ball game, and of course, Alou ran the Giants right out of an inning, the last inning, the, that inning ending double play, that nice play by Andy Chavez and Kaz Matsui. You know, what made that play even more inexcusable from Alou's standpoint, as Wynn takes a strike as he was jumping out of the way, is the fact that you know, you're obviously making the third out of third, which you never want to do, but you do it with the pitcher on deck, forcing the pitcher to lead off the next inning. E either that compounds it, certainly. You, if you're going to make that play, no matter what the situation, make sure you're safe. Make sure you get there. Because you know, what's the advantage of being at third base with two out in the pitcher up? Well, the only advantage could be is an error you score. Right. Okay, fine. One and one to win, who's now 0 for his last 15. Two and one. Steve Traxel making his fourth start of the year. Last year he made his first start of the year in this ballpark. It was on August the 26th at a time when the Mets were still very much in the hunt for the National League wild card. His wind fouls it off and Traxel had undergone back surgery in the spring and did his rehab and did it wonderfully to the point where the back was giving him no trouble at all and he was ready to pitch for several weeks before the Mets finally worked him into that first start here in San Francisco and if you remember the Mets had just come from Arizona where they had had an incredible offensive series against the Diamondbacks that was uh, Mike Jacobs coming out party there and Traxel took them out here in the opening game of the series and pitched as good a game as the Mets had pitched for them all last year. In fact, in his first start of the year in late August, he had a no hitter into the sixth inning. And he wound up pitching eight shutout innings. The Mets won the game one to nothing, and it looked like they were ready to roll. But they lost the next two games here in San Francisco. They had one more gasp in them when they went home to play the Phillies. Ramon Castro hit a game winning home run on the 30th of August, but it all went downhill from there. Slapped to short. Reyes with the backhand fires low and Delgado scoops it out. Nice pick by Delgado. That's the second out of the inning. Well I said it all last year all this year. Jose Reyes is very very solid and dependable at short. Now the throw didn't get here. Nice pick by Delgado. But he's got such good hands. And of course the strong arm. Nice pick. It was a, like a high line maneuver by Mr. Delgado. Well, those short hops are easier. The in between hop is the tough one. There's Vizquel, and he takes outside. Vizquel fly to center his first time. I watched that series. You're know, getting back to what your point was about the Mets in that Arizona series last year, and I watched the whole series at home on TV. I did. I didn't make that trip. I had never seen a stinkier club in that Arizona team that series in my entire in my entire life. Well the part of the problem was remember that the Diamondbacks in that series were playing Sean Green in center field. He couldn't play center and Chad Tracy in right field and he's an infielder playing the outfield. Then he had Luis Gonzalez who was just coming back from Tommy John surgery and couldn't throw in left and they didn't catch a ball the entire series the three of them. Check swing. Loduca off balance got him. So Laduca throws out Vizquel and Traxel has himself a 1 2 3 inning. We go to the fourth in San Francisco, still Mets 1, Giants 1. We go to the fourth inning. Mets third base coach Manny Acta taking his spot in the coaching box as Cliff Floyd leads off in the top of the fourth and drives one to deep center field, but Wynn is there. And he makes the catch, one pitch, and one retired. We had a chance to catch up with Manny in the Mets dugout before he went out to the coaching lines. And here's what Manny had to say. So Manny I know how much you pride yourself on on helping the defense on this team. That was a tremendous relay from Chavez to Matsui to right to get Alou at third. Yeah that was a nice play. Uh, everything was done uh, fundamentally sound. Chavez hit the cutoff man and Matsui was alert and uh, threw Alou out there for the, the third out of the inning. David Wright has had 
a year in which he's made some progress on the defensive end but he's also had some shaky times of late. What have you seen to, to enlighten us about how David's doing over there. Well uh, he, he's done real good. Uh, he hadn't made an error until that uh, game in New York and then the other day he played kind of shaky uh, in San Diego but you know he's working hard you know he's a young kid and uh, uh, that day he looked a little bit tired because uh, we had just played those 14 innings and uh, he has played every uh, pretty much every inning uh, of the season so uh, the kid is going to be fine. All right Manny well thanks so much for joining us. And uh, the kid is going to be fine. Yes. I think that right now as much as anything David is struggling with a little groin problem which prevents him from moving as yes. well as he'd like. But I don't think he's tired. 24 years old in April you're not tired in April. I guarantee it. I think he's got that aggravation in his groin and it's affecting him. It's, it's obvious when you have a groin injury it affects your lateral movement. Not your forward and backward movement so it affects your range to your left or right. One and two to Nady and he reaches for one and just gets a piece. Well Xavier is going to have to lay off that breaking ball he keeps on chasing it further and further away from the strike zone. Wright is just going to continue to pound him out there out of the strike zone. This is the one thing that Nady has not yet. And he had this is the first year he's, he's got to play every day. I think he's got a world of talent and deserves a chance to see the, for the Mets to see what he can do. And he's done fine so far to, uh, in, in April. But well, what we've seen early in him right now is that he's got to learn to lay off that bad breaking ball from a right hand hitter. Pitcher excuse me. Well he did have those two base hits to right yesterday and that's big progress for him. That's good eye right there. Back. The uh, the two opposite field hits. Only the fourth time in Nady's career that he's ever had two opposite field hits in the same game. So it's something he needs to focus on. It's that ball to the left side. And Belize throws him out two away. So Jamie Wright's now retired six Mets in a row. Remember he gave up five hits first time through the batting order. He's blanked them second time around and Kaz Matsui comes up with two out and nobody on. Well when you get five hits you look at Willie Randolph right there you get five hits in the first two innings and only come away with one run. Those are lost opportunities they all they most times than not come back to bite you. And Wright is one of those sinker ball pitchers who when they get settled in they're tough to beat. He's got a very wicked cut fastball like a slider. And a curve down curve. Matsui had a base hit to right his first time, then he got picked off. And the changeup misses one and one. When Wright first came up with Colorado, he had a terrific changeup, but he doesn't throw it very much anymore. And Matsui rolls one to second. And Viscaino throws him out, and that's seven in a row retired by Jamie Wright. So the Mets go one, two, three. We go to the bottom of the fourth in San Francisco, still tied at one. Take your family to Shea. The MasterCard Grand Slam Ticket Pack offers four discounted tickets and Mets money. For more information, call 718-507-TIXX or visit Mets.com and have your MasterCard ready. Lance Negro leading off in the bottom of the fourth in a 1-1 game. And Traxel misses 1-1. One one. Negro lined one off the right field fence just inside the foul pole. And Xavier Nady did a great job playing the carom and threw Negro out trying to stretch it into a double that ended the first inning. So the Mets have a couple of outfield assists already in this game one from Chavez one from Nady and Necro hits that one to left field and Floyd circling in one away. So Traxel's now retired five in a row and now Bonds will come up for the second time. Well, last night the Mets opted to pitch around Bonds on several occasions and now Lou beat them. Tonight, Steve Traxel went after Bonds and Barry hit his second home run of the year. Fastball up, belt high, away. The ball will carry that way, but still, you've got to hit it. And you see up there, it's a 710th. He's four behind Ruth. And now 50 ahead of his godfather, Willie Mays. And you see right there, you got to rush him. That beat him inside right there. Now, you got to be careful when you do that. Barry's a smart enough hitter to look in. I mean, he's a great hitter. 
But he definitely got beat on that fastball in right there. And when he's looking in, that's when the ball splashes down in right field. And he went around to the breaking ball. And Bonds not happy with the call by Bill Miller. Well, it's a split finger in the dirt. Let's see. Well, I'll tell you what, he may have a he may have a point. Sure looked like he stopped it. Now Troxel with a two strike advantage. That's playing the overshift against Bonds. And Barry holds up on that. One and two. You see Matsui about 25 feet into the outfield. Bonds is not running well at all. So you can get extra depth on a ground ball and throw him out. And Traxel strikes him out with a split. So Traxel has his first strike out of the night as he gets Bonds. That's Bonds' fifth strikeout, all set up by the first pitch fastball inside. And that's a pretty good little splitter right there. That is Bruce Suter esque. It's become such a weapon for Traxel. You know, his last start against the uh, Padres, he threw a lot of curveballs. And he threw a few early here, and he seems to have gotten away from it. Couldn't command it well. Now here's Al Lou with two out and nobody on. And he pulls one foul. Well, the 60s, the slider came into the baseball and changed, made it more difficult. And then Bruce Suter came in in the late 70s and brought the split finger in. And that just made it. When he came in, all that's all Bruce threw was split fingers. And now it's the cut fastball. A hot pitch. Well, the cut fastball came in in when I was playing the Montreal staff. Charlie Lee, Steve Rogers, David Palmer before I heard his arm. They all, and Brent Smith, they all threw the cutter. But now it seems as though every pitcher is picking it up. One and two to Alou. In 2006 Hyundai the Mets and Sportsnet New York are teaming up to strike out cancer for every K the Mets pitching staff registers Hyundai the Mets and Sportsnet New York will donate twenty five dollars to the Hope and Heroes Children's Cancer Fund. Should count double when you strike out bonds. Yeah I, I agree with you. <laughs> now Lou lays off the splitter and it's two and two. Traxel's allowed just three hits, one of them the home run by Bonds. He's walked one, he's struck out one. Making his fourth start of the year and looking for his second win. Pitched well enough to win his last time out against the Padres. Throws the curve and misses, and it's three and two. There's the curve. I don't think he's thrown one for a strike yet tonight. That's like a drop almost. When we were kids, we'd call that a drop. 3 2 to Alou and a bad swing and a miss and Traxel strikes him out with a fastball back to back strikeouts of Bonds and Alou we go to the fifth 1 1. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Sterling Max and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Sterling Max. We start the fifth inning. Mets and Giants tied at one. Andy Chavez tries to bunt his way on and fouls it off. Chavez was struck out his first time up. Starting for the ninth time in the last 10 games. All of those because Carlos Beltran's hamstring continues to be bulky. What the heck is that? It's a bat. Can you show that again there, Webby? 34 32. 34 inch, 32 ounce. Three at the date. 314.06. You got me. I have no idea where that with that TH I or one means. And then the numbers at the bottom. And Wright strikes out Chavez for the second time. Third strikeout for Wright. Let's check in with Chris Cotter. Hey Gary and Keith you know over the last couple of nights I've been showing you some interesting parts of this AT&T park and here's another one out here in right field fans can actually come in and watch the game for free 
You don't have to pay anything. It's just literally, you, know, you come right off the sidewalk, right off of McCovey Cove, and you can watch the game for absolutely nothing. Now, what they do, though, is if it gets too crowded in here, they'll shuffle people out every third inning. So the good news on a night like tonight with Steve Traxel pitching, you get to see at least an hour of, of, of the game, no <laughs> doubt about that, right? Oh, that's, you're tough. That's a shot right there. <laughs> you're getting a little cocky out there. One and one to Traxel. <laughs> you know, Bobby Valentine, who was one of the great thinkers in the game, had an idea about how you would in a new ballpark as Traxel grounds one to third and Feliz throws him out two away you would put in a moving sidewalk and you'd have openings all around the ballpark where people could see the game and they'd stand on the moving sidewalk and it would take them all the way around the ballpark and let them see the game from every different perspective. That's an idea how much did, how much it would cost people would pay a lot for it though probably pay for itself. That'd be a nice bond issue wouldn't it. Would certainly add to it. Well, the first two passes through the batting order for Jamie Wright could not have been different, could not have been more different. First time through, the Mets had five hits. Second time through, he retired nine in a row. Reyes led off the game with the base hit, stole a base, and scored the Mets' only run. He's one for two. Corners pinch in, and he pulls one to the corner, and Necro makes the unassisted play. And Jamie Wright's now retired 10 Mets in a row. We're halfway through in San Francisco, tied at one. I'm Steve Overmeyer with this Chevy Baseball Night New York update. The Braves, the Brewers, game tied at two, and Prince Fielder singles to left field. Brewers go on to win 4-2 over the Braves. Marlins, Cubs in 39 degree weather. Bottom of the seventh, Dontrell Willis gets ripped by Matt Merton. The Cubs go on to win this one 3-1. Now back to San Francisco with Gary Cohn and Keith Hernandez. All right, Stephen, as the National League East continues to struggle, the National League Central picks up the slack. Five of the six teams in the Central are now over 500. To me, the biggest surprise, the Cincinnati Reds with their win tonight are now 14 and 7. The Reds a team without a whole lot of pitching, but their offense has been spectacular early in the year. And Feliz drives one to center, but Chavez right there. One pitch and one retired. Well, there's always a lot of teams or a lot of players, individuals that get off hot and have good Aprils. And that's the beauty of, of baseball is that it is a long season of all the sports. It's a long season every day, and cream will come to the top. And you have early surprises. I mean, the Reds called up Brandon Phillips, a guy who had been a, a washout with the Indians, and he's off to a blistering start, and they can't get him out of the lineup. Is Viscaino taking a strike? Viscaino single to center. He's the last man to reach against Traxel. So while Wright has retired 10 in a row, Traxel's now retired 8 in a row as the pitchers have settled in in the middle of the game. Traxel sliding to the line, makes the throw on target, and they got him. Traxel making a terrific play. Might have gotten his spike caught in the grass. But he throws out Viscaino for the second out. This is a big league play right here. He could have turned his ankle. He had no time to waste here. He just had to throw it off balance, falling backward. Tremendous. And Tremendous play. Loduka going out to the mound to make sure the Traxel's okay. That was quite an athletic play by Traxel. Absolutely. That's as good as it gets. That was a Ron Darling play. Ron could pick it, you know. Yes, he could. He Ron should have got more uh, Golden Gloves. You know, but I know he had he won Greg won. Maddox, yeah. and you know, was getting it every year, and that's a reputation thing. But I thought Ronnie was a was a better fielder than Maddox. Ron was very athletic. Ron won the last National League Gold Glove for a pitcher before Maddox began his streak. As Mike Matheny takes a strike, and you know how it is with Gold Gloves. Once you win them, you tend to keep on winning. Well, you've got to play. Well, not necessarily. You, you've got to play and be good. You can you count on to come a butcher. Well, wait a second. Didn't Rafael Palmero win a Gold Glove at first base, playing 28 games at the position that's, one year? That's because it was the American League, well, not ridiculous. our league. Ridiculous. Not the National League. <laughs> we have integrity in this league. <laughs> oh, and two to Matheny. He hit the fly ball to Chavez that turned into a double play his first time, and now a comeback at a Traxel. And Steve in a pretty good rhythm right now. He's retired 10 in a row. We've played five now at AT&T Park. Mets and Giants still tied at one. The beautiful city of San Francisco, home to a duck. 
Time for the Outflag trivia question. Somehow those two shots do not go together. No. <laughs> Other than Barry Bonds, who's the only player to appear in 100 or more games against the Mets for two different teams. It's an interesting one. Really? Bonds has played over 100 games against the Mets as a Pirate and as a Giant. Paul Oduka leads off the sixth inning in a tie game and takes ball one. Pete Rose. It's a possibility. Reds, Phillies, Expos. One and one to Laduca, who thought that pitch was inside. Laduca drove in the Mets' only run with a first inning single. The Mets scored before a batter was retired. But Wright has settled in to retire 10 in a row. And the breaking ball pulled just foul. One and two to Laduca. Well, it's time for the best of Barbados vacation getaway. If a Met hits a home run, one grand prize winner will win an all expense paid trip to the Almond Beach Village Resort in Barbados. To enter or see if you're a contestant, visit sny.tv slash Barbados today. And it's a darn sight warmer there than it is here in San Francisco. And he gets him swinging at the breaking ball, Laduca down. A rare time that Laduca has struck out. Fourth strikeout for Wright. Well, it's the old yellow hammer here, and it's over the top. Oh, it meant to get it away in just inside corner, over the middle, but broke sharp down out of the strike zone. Fourth time that Laduca has struck out this season in 63 at bats. So one out and nobody on. That's 11 in a row retired by Jamie Wright. Jamie Wright coming into tonight had a 5.10 career earned run average. But he is off to a great start for the Giants this year. Want to know to Delgado. So it would make you think as a general manager what would you want this guy on your team. Because a lot of that 5.10 earned run average was achieved pitching at Coors Field. I guess that's the best answer. Delgado takes a strike. He also pitched in another pretty good hitters ballpark in Milwaukee. Miller Park. But at sea level he's pretty good. Here's David Wright on deck. One and two to Delgado. Well we're certainly at sea level here. That 5.10 career, career earned run average among pitchers who pitched a thousand or more innings is the fifth highest all time. Two of the pitchers on that list Wright and Brian Bohannon are refugees from Coors Field. Two and two to Delgado. Here's that list. Highest all time career earned run average. Jimmy Haynes most recently of the Reds. Lima we saw in spring training. Bohannon also pitched for the Mets in addition to the Rockies. Not a list you want to be on. Nope. Delgado fouls it off. Good cut by Delgado on a tough pitch. This is a hard slider on the hands. He got to it. He just missed it. On two and two, Delgado bounces one to Vizquel. Playing on the overshift, and he throws him out two away. That's 12 in a row now for Jamie Wright, who's keeping it on the ground. The WB11 knows you want an accurate, reliable weather forecast. You can plan your life around. That's where Mr. G comes in. He'll tell you what to expect morning, noon, and night, plus the days ahead. Mr. G's planning forecast only on the WB11 News. It may not be Candlestick Park. But it's still cold <laughs> in San Francisco in April. Well, at least the fans here that are not in the upper tank are sheltered from the wind. The wind seems to sweep over the fence. There's a change up right there. Well, what you don't see are a lot of blankets in the stands, which you used to see all the time at Candlestick, even in the middle of the summer. Right is 0 for 2. One ball, one strike. But you got to keep your parka handy. 
There's a blanket. But a candlestick, every fan would have a blanket. Two and one. People are, are, are used to the weather here, too. They're acclimated to the temperature. But the candlestick wind just blew right through you. It didn't matter how much how many layers you put on. On two and one, right bounces it foul. So right keeps pounding that sinker ball to right. Right? Right. Certainly. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Has anybody heard the curly shuffle lately? I miss the curly shuffle. So do we all. Foul good, back. Good cut by right right there. I mean, they can, you know, they can write all the new songs that they want. But the best rallying cry the Mets ever had was the Curly Shuffle. Absolutely. Again on two and two. Right lines a base hit to left field. So that snaps the string of 12 in a row retired by Jamie Wright, and it's broken up by David Wright. Very good at bat by David Wright there. So two out of runner on and Cliff Floyd coming up. Let's get the answer to our Aflac trivia question. Affleck. I can't hear the duck. Or get him out. <laughs> Other than Bonds, who's the only player to appear in 100 or more games for the Mets with two different teams. Oh, yes. Joe Torrey, who barely made it. For the Braves and Cardinals, and of course also played for the Mets in addition to managing the Mets. His first tenure as a skipper. Pete Rose didn't play long enough in Philadelphia. Or Montreal. And he was uh, he was there for one year, wasn't he, in Montreal? One, yeah, maybe. One or one and a half. Right. And Floyd takes a change up away from Jamie Wright, one and oh. Floyd tonight is grounded out and flied out. He also scorched one that just missed being an extra base hit, a foul ball over first. See if Wright would try and steal the base here. David's five for five, but again, Jamie Wright with that good move. He's already picked off a runner tonight. David is back. Wright picked off Kazmatsui in the second inning. And so David's got to be wary. Floyd just trying to find some hits. He's been swinging the bat better, but not getting a lot of results. Pulls that one and Nico right at the bag. And that retires the side. So a two out single, but the Mets can't do anything with it. We go to the bottom of the sixth, still tied 1 1. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Steve Traxel has settled in and pitched the way he generally pitches against the Giants, which is really better than he pitches against anybody else. His opposite number, Jamie Wright's been just as good, and Wright leads off in the home sixth and takes ball one. Like Traxel is nine and four lifetime with a 2.57 ERA against the Giants and probably pitched well, definitely pitched the most important game of his life against the Giants. That was in 1998 when he was pitching for the Cubs, and the Cubs and Giants finished the season tied for the National League Wild Card, and they played a one-game playoff. And Traxel pitched that game against the Giants at Wrigley Field. Loop to right, Nady in. And he picks it off, playing shallow against the opposing pitcher. So one away. For the latest on the Mets and the most up-to-date sports news, log on to our website at sny.tv. And while you're there, like Jim of Garfield, New Jersey, you can ask the booth. Jim wants to know, Keith, of all the teams you played for, who was the best at keeping the clubhouse loose? Roger McDowell. Head and shoulders above. Head and shoulders down and legs in the air. Right. <laughs> the monster. <laughs> Would you care to elaborate? Um, Roger in Dodger Stadium wore his uniform in reverse by putting his pants on his head and his shirt. He put his legs through the shirt upside down. And the pants were tied around his face. It looked like a monster. <laughs> and I was sitting in the dugout, minding my own business. We're getting ready to watch right, right around 15 minutes for the game. And there comes Roger out of the and goes into the in the track in front and starts to track in front of the dugout and starts 
looking at the fans like he's a Boris Karloff. And uh, I never laughed so hard in my life. So he kept you loose. Of course. But here's the key question. If win takes 3-0, and did he ever get you with a hot foot? He never got me with a hot foot. He didn't like to bother the player guys who are playing every day. The players that you can get the hot foot are, are, the, are the reserve players. 3-0, and oh, and Traxel misses, and there's his second walk of the game. And it goes to Randy Wynn, a speedy guy with one out in the sixth. Now, Traxel had retired 11 in a row before that walk. I know he got Bill Robinson at least once. Well, it's the guys that are sitting on the bench, and you got you got you're, you're sitting on the bench. You're a bench player because you got to sneak under the bench like you're you're you know, you're, you're like a, a ranger or a, <laughs> you know you're in the jungle and you're creeping up on your enemy. <laughs> it's very stealthy. And a pretty good accomplice in Howard Johnson on those hot foots. Here's Vizquel, and Maxwell checks in on Win. Randy Wynn has just one stolen base so far this year. This is a good hit and run situation here in the sixth inning. Speedy runner at first, guy that handles the bat well in Vizquel. Tie ball game. Try to break it open. Wynn not getting a very big lead. Wright creeps in closer at third, and Traxel looks him back. Wynn only has one stolen base this year so far. He's been thrown out once. The stolen base threat has been Vizquel, who's five and five uh, stolen bases and not thrown out once. Wynn had 19 steals last year, but he also got caught 11 times. Not a very good percentage. And Vizquel bluffing a bunt takes a strike. Tough to put a hit and run on now. Particularly with a guy like Traxel. Look at Lance Necro in the on deck circle, who likes to nibble. Especially ahead in the count. So yeah, I would, I would hope, I would think that it would go to a 2 1 count. And the manager has the option to hopefully get it to 3 and 1. Miguel fouls off the splitter, and now it's 0 and 2. So any idea of a hit and run now is, is wiped out. 0 and 2 count. Felipe Alou took over for Dusty Baker as manager of the Giants when Dusty moved on to Chicago. And the Giants really haven't missed a beat. They've been a, a factor in the National League West every year since Barry Bonds arrived. Of course, last year, Bonds was hurt all year, and the Giants faded. Bonds arrived here in 1993. Arrived when the Giants were still playing at Candlestick. And then this ballpark opened in the 2000 season. The Giants were in the postseason their first year in this park. Played the Mets in the National League Division Series. And the Mets beat the Giants en route to the World Series. Slap foul, but... That series, if you'll recall, began out here, and the Giants won the first game as they beat Mike Hampton. The Mets had a three-run lead going to the ninth inning in game two, and then J.T. Snow hit a three-run homer off Armando Benitez to tie the game. But the Mets would win it in the tenth against Felix Rodriguez, and then went home, and Benny Agbayani hit a 13th inning home run to win game three, and Bobby Jones pitched the game of his life in game four. There goes Win and Vizquel hits a rocket foul. Vizquel has one home run this year, but certainly not a home run hitter. I still say Bobby Valentine should have been the manager of the year, hands down, that year. That club it had good pitching. That's why it got there. But offensively, that, that was not a, a, a championship club. They were actually a better offensive team the year before in 99. With John Oliver. And Fiskell lines one to center. Can Chavez get there? He does. He picks it off. Now Wynn has to try to hustle back to first. And Chavez's throw just a shade too late. Well, Andy Chavez continues to play the heck out of center field. That's the second out. 
He certainly does here. Gets a great break on this ball and alertly has a chance to throw out when double him off. Here's the Toyota National League scoreboard. You see the Nationals fall to the Reds, who are now 14 and 7. And the Phillies are starting to score some more runs, but they lose at home to the Rockies. Braves go down in Milwaukee. Dodgers and Astros 3 3 in the 11th. That's a chance for the Mets to pick it up. Everybody else in the East has lost. Well, here's Negro with two on the runner at first. Ball one. Negro singled off the wall and right in the first. Nady threw him out trying to stretch, and then he flied out in the fourth. The Giants have only three hits off Traxel. They all came in the first two innings. Game tied at one now in the bottom of the sixth. Traxel's pitch count very reasonable tonight. He's thrown only 72 pitches with two out of the sixth inning. He's pitched a fine ball game. Two walks in this five and two thirds. Two strikeouts. Just the one mistake to Bonds. See if Wynn thinks about stealing a base here with two out. Has his second home run of the year tonight, number 710 lifetime. And so Traxel trying to go right after Negro in this spot. There goes Wynn. Loduca's throw to second on target, and Wynn is tagged out. Paul Loduca with a perfect throw, guns down Randy Wynn to end the inning. Loduca's been struggling with his throwing, but not here. And Traxel's through six, it's one to one. I'm Steve Obermeyer with the Chevy Baseball Night New York update. The Rockies, the Phillies, bottom of the nine. Rockies holding on to a one-run lead with two on. Aaron Rowland flipping one out, and that's going to end the game. Rockies nearly wasted a six-run lead, but hold on to win 7-6. Now back to San Francisco with Gary Cohen and Keith Hernandez. All right, Steve, and the good news for the Rockies, in addition to their win, is that Todd Helton is out of the hospital. He's been diagnosed with... Iliitis as Nady lifts one to deep left field. Bonds going back near the wall and jumps and he can't get it. Home run. Xavier Nady clears the wall in left field. His sixth home run of the year. And the Mets go back out in front. It's 2-1 to one New York. Nady jumping on the first pitch. Jamie Wright throws in the top of the seventh inning to give the Mets the lead. Well, he is a cripple hitter and a good hitter, but he jumps on the cripple. That is for sure. And you have to look at Floyd. Now Xavier Nady returning to Northern California where he went to college at Berkeley and celebrates with a home run that gives the Mets the lead. Well, here's the pitch. Oh, boy, up and over the middle, and that is not where Jamie Wright wanted it. He saw the catcher set up on the outside corner, and that just barely. Look at Bonds. He didn't like that jump. And you wonder, I'm not sure how close Bonds got to that. You wonder if Barry's leg was a little more healthy, if he might have had a chance for that ball. Well, no, he might have. You're right. It didn't make it by much, and you can see him. Can't be enjoyable. Now he's been wincing all night with that knee. Two and one to Matsui. After he hit the home run, he limped into the dugout, and you wondered whether he was even going to stay in the game. And they're making that aborted leap. Matsui over the mound. Viscaino and Viscal. They can't even think about throwing Matsui out. It's an infield hit. So Matsui has his second straight multiple hit game. Didn't get a whole lot of it, but got it over the pitcher. Well, this is your old CNI dog right here. Couldn't have placed it more perfect, couldn't have bounced it higher and put it in a more perfect spot. And with his speed, you can forget it. Now, Andy Chavez is coming to bat. Steve Traxel has come out on deck, but the Mets bullpen is working to honor Sanchez. So we'll see how the Mets play it here. You have to figure Traxel's staying in the game. He's thrown only 73 pitches. 
in his six innings and now he has a lead. His tracks a lot deck. Sanchez hasn't thrown. My goodness in a few days more than a few days. Since the banister start. In San Diego. Four games ago. So he's ready. Want to know to Chavez, but I, I'm wondering why he's up right now. Because you figure Traxel, 73 pitches, is going to be good for at least another inning. So with, uh, with Bonds due up in the seventh, Sanchez getting ready. And now Chavez bunting. Off the mound is right and makes the play to first just in time. So does that mean Traxel's not going to back? Nope, he's out. Yeah, if you're going to bunt, that means you're going to pinch hit. And indeed, Traxel is done. So this is a very interesting decision on the part of Willie Randolph trying to get an extra run here and taking out a pitcher who's been very effective tonight. But Traxel has done his work for six, and now it's going to be up to the Mets' bullpen to secure it. Well, I can understand Willie's thinking here. This is a club that has been struggling to score runs. You force it and make it happen. The strength of this club now, it's deep in the game. It's going to be into the seventh. It's into the seventh inning. A strength has been the bullpen, particularly in Heilman and Sanchez, who are both the bridges to Wagner. And Jose Valentin will try and pick up Matsui from second base. It's been a struggle for Valentin, just two for 20 to start the year. And he takes ball one from Jamie Wright. Valentin looking for his first run batted into the season. So Willie Randolph looking for offense and pulling out an effective Traxel with a two to one lead in the seventh. You also have Chavez who's been struggling at the plate. Hit hard but right at Vizcaino who boots it makes the play in time. Good recovery by Vizcaino and I'm not sure whether Valentin might have stopped coming out of the batter's box. Ball came up but he stayed in front. Kicked off his his chest makes the running throw. Uh, it's a very close play. Good hustle by Valentin out of the box. Uh, not really. He was dogging at the first couple of steps and then he accelerated. Well that's close. He gave up on that ball and then realized he had a chance to beat it out. Reyes takes low and in as Matheny saves a run. Well, Jose is going to see a steady diet of breaking balls, particularly if a pitcher has a good one, as Wright does, until he proves he can hit it. The corners have to stay in against Reyes. The two out and a runner at third against the threat of the bunt. One and one to Jose. Reyes one for three on the night and he's been struggling but this year with runners in scoring position he's hitting 350 trying to pick up Matsui from third and he lines one to center but win is there and that retires the sides so the Mets settle for just the one run on the Xavier Nady home run Nady going deep for the sixth time this year and it gives the Mets a two to one lead going to the bottom of the seventh inning here in San Francisco. Hey Mets fans always traveling and missing games watch Mets games live online whenever you're away from New York exclusively from MLB.tv. Mets.com has more live games than anyone else. Mets.com where baseball is always on. They go to the bottom of the seventh inning and Duaner Sanchez takes over the pitching for New York. Well he has been absolutely perfect so far this season. What an acquisition for this club when the trade a J. So trade picked him up from the Dodgers with this in mind to strengthen the bullpen. And he has been outstanding. And Lance Necro leads off and takes a strike from Sanchez. So you got Necro up and Bonds on deck, and this makes this an essential hitter for Sanchez to get out in a one run ball game. Off the fists, Matsui in. One away. So there's a big out for Sanchez, one down in the bottom of the seventh. 
And now here comes Bonds. And this will be interesting to see how the Mets approach Bonds in this spot with the Mets holding a one run lead and the base is empty. What do you do? Go after him. That's all that's what it's about. It's a challenge. You're not going to walk him. No one on base. Lots of teams do. I understand. I never understood it. Oh, I'll tell you what, he doesn't move well neither. Not out of the way. And those knees are hurting. I guarantee you that made him do the do the fast foot there, and that's going to hurt. It did that probably gave him a little a little pain. Well, he's in pain. There's no question about that. He's shown that on his face all night. Sanchez keeps the fastball away, two and zero. Oh. Now Felipe Lou may have to pinch run for him if he gets on base. Barry is not one that's going to go first to third or score in a double. And there's a strike on the changeup, two and one. And he wishes he had swung at that pitch. He was taking all the way, and look where this pitch is. Oh, ho, 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 ho. high changeup in the wheelhouse. Ooh, and Barry was just taken all the way. Three and one now to Bonds. He's got such a good eye at the plate. Sanchez delivers 3 1, and Bonds takes it ball four. So it's the fourth time that Bonds has walked in this series, and the 24th time this season. He's had only 38 official at bats. No rubber chicken, who wasn't an intentional walk. Those are all the intentional walks, by the way, for the Giants this year, not just Bonds, but most of them belong to Barry. So now Bonds is the tying one at first with one out. And Willie Randolph hopes Moise Salou doesn't burn the Mets after a Bonds walk as he did last night. And Alou 0 for 1 in a walk tonight. And Sanchez misses high. Sanchez going back to last year 15 consecutive scoreless innings. For Greg Maddox. My goodness. Maddox 4 and 0 to start the year at age 40. 2 and 0. It's been a good year for elder starter starting pitchers. Glavin off to a great start and Maddox. Kenny Rogers lost last night but he's pitched well. The 40 year olds are thriving. 2 0 now to Alou after Bonds walked. Sanchez delivers, hit hard, best, right and into left field. Bonds will have to stop at second, and that ball just completely ate up David Wright. And that'll be a base hit right there. That was a rocket ship right there. And here it is again. Just an in between hop. The only thing you can do there if you can get your body in front is just stay in front. Couldn't tell that angle. There's Bond. There's just no way he's going to third base. Sacrifice your body if you get in front of that ball. And right more got out of the way than anything else. Now Lou just scorching it in this series. So now the tying and lead runs are on base with one out. And here's the ice cold Pedro Feliz. 0 for 2 tonight. 0 for his last 14. Sanchez in trouble. And he throws a strike to Feliz. The shortstop should be two. Reyes to Matsui and on the first double play side retired. Duaner Sanchez gets through another scoreless inning. And the Mets carry a two to one lead into the eighth in San Francisco. The view from above AT&T Park in San Francisco. As we check out the Hyundai in-game box score, that's got a run before they ever had an out recorded tonight. But it's Xavier Nady's home run that's the difference in the game. That's with a two to one lead as we go to the eighth. The starter Jamie Wright still on the mound for Colorado as Paul Laduca leads off. Laduca one for three drove in that first Met run back in the opening inning. One and oh. Barry Bonds hit the hit his 710th home run tonight. And it's 
One and one to Leduca. That was a solo shot back in the second to left field. Carlos Delgado on deck, and then David Wright here in the top of the eighth as Mets try to add to their two to one lead. Ooh, come backer to right. Oh, bounced the throw, but Negro stayed with it, one away. That is a serious jam shot. That is in your pots and pans in your cocina. This is jamming right there. That's just getting in on you. That's a boring, hard sinker on your hands. And why do so many pitchers have trouble throwing the ball to first base? Because they're too involved in what they're doing out there on the mound. <laughs> Who knows? One out and nobody on. I was fascinated the other day watching Chad Bradford throw the ball to first base on a comebacker and throw it submarine style to first. I'm not sure I'd seen that before. And Delgado fouls one off. They've been pitching Delgado pretty tough in this series. It's a good sinker right down knee high outside corner. They have the overshift on against Carlos. Locks one foul and it's 0 and 2. And you see three infielders on the right side. The second baseman Viscaino will out into the outfield. And some defense the same way against Bonstein. Two to one New York. We're in the eighth. Jamie Wright's pitched a good game for the Giants, but he finds himself behind. He's up to 95 pitches on the night. His fourth start, and he's been very good. Billy Wagner. Stein to windmill that arm. Wagner tends to spend the first six innings of the game sitting in the dugout. A lot of relievers go to the clubhouse, they ride the bike. Billy watches the whole game, sits in the dugout for the first six innings, then goes down to the bullpen. Well, stoppers know they're not going to be used to the ninth, maybe in the eighth. And Delgado just gets a piece of that to stay alive. I mean, Trevor Hoffman goes to the clubhouse and he rides the bike and he has a snack and he listens to the game on the radio and he gets a rub down. Not Billy. <laughs> Billy just hangs out in the, in the dugout. He, he loves the game. He wants to see what's going on. One and two to Delgado. And he pops it up. The third baseman, Feliz, out. And he makes the grab. Feliz, who was playing over near shortstop in the shift. There was no way Bonds was going to get there, so Feliz had to do the work. Well, Bees are right about that. Barry has no chance, and don't think the infielders aren't aware of that. So two out and nobody on. And now here's Wright. David one for three on the night, had a base hit his last time up. Base hits have been few and far between for Wright, though, on this road trip. That was a good at bat for David at last at bat. David's now in a 5 for 32 skid. Still hitting at 319 on the year, and he rips that one toward the hole. Great stop by Vizquel. Up and throwing on a hop, and he's safe at first. Wright just beat it out. Vizquel, a magician at shortstop. Negro picked it up, but a little too late. Just a rocket. Nice play by Vizquel. Didn't get much on the throw. Oh, he's out. My goodness, let's see here. That's a rocket by Wright. Hustling, he smells that hit. The ball slowed down on the hop to Negro. Didn't get much on the throw. Let's see here. Out. He's out. Out. Thank well, you very much. Get a benefit of the call. Thank you very much. Jerry Davis, the crew chief, the umpire at first. But Wright hustled it out, and he got the benefit of a bad call. So a two out base runner, and here's Cliff Floyd. David needs to be careful against that pickoff move of Jamie Wright's. Wright picked off Matsui back in the second. Cliff, meanwhile, continues to hit the ball hard and continues to hit in hard luck. 0 for 3 tonight. Nothing in one to Floyd. Now the most advanced traffic information is just a click away with WB11.com's commuter cast. Get real-time traffic updates on your computer every weekday afternoon at 4. Log on to WB11.com for a commuter cast. Mets 2, Giants 1, top of the 8th.
thirty one year old Jamie Wright pitching to Cliff Floyd and he's paying a lot of attention to David Wright over at first base. Well we can see now we're in the, well into deep into this game why Jamie Wright has is two and zero oh and an ERA under three. He's pitched an outstanding game here tonight. Got a pitch up to Nady that cost him but almost everything else has been down. And that's down and Floyd can't stop the swing and it's 0 and 2. Let's see if he swung. Mike, they, they ring up guys so much this year. I don't know if he goes a call strike or a swing. It just seems to me and I said it countless times that umpires just love to ring it up. Anything that, close. That was the home plate umpire. He didn't ask for help. Right gets back. David's five for five stealing bases this year. The Mets as a team have stolen 20 bases and been caught only twice, including Reyes swiping one of the first inning tonight. Floyd in an 0 and 2 hole. Big lead. A spot where you should be running, and he almost gets picked off. Ooh. That is such a good move. Watch his back foot off the mound. He has to move his back foot off. He just got back. It's hard to tell from that angle. Again, you have a left hand throwing first baseman. That's an out. Just takes so much longer to get that glove across for a right hand thrower. Absolutely. Let's see what kind of lead David gets here. Shortened up a bit. Not going. It's a pitch out. I mean the theory here on 0 and 2 with two out is that you run if you make it great and if you don't you save your hitter in at bat for the next inning. Well here it is again. Let's see. Yep he got back. Good call by the umpire. And just barely. David's been in the league long enough now and the teams know that he's a potential stolen base threat. They're not going to forget about him in a close ball game like this in the top of the eighth. Not the fastest guy in the field but he's a good opportunity stolen base guy. Lengthens out that lead again. He's not going. Oh it takes the breaking ball and it just missed. Well, let me tell you something if that pitch had been around six inches up on the knees higher. Floyd's punched out. That is nasty. That is your old backdoor slider. That one almost tied Matheny in knots. He caught that ball sideways. And a quick throw by Jamie Wright. And David Wright, who spent a lot of time on his belly in this trip to first base, is back again. Let's see if he tries to come up and in on him now. He's thrown him a couple pitches away. He's got two strikes on him. Dini outside, right running. He's wasted away. So right waited till two and two to go. Didn't run on 0 and two, and that was that turned out to be a good move because the Giants pitched out. You just wait until hopefully you can get a 3-2 count. And run automatic. Goes right, and Floyd takes the breaking ball outside. Matheny didn't even think about making a throw, and so Wright has his sixth stolen base without being caught. Now you got to wonder if they're going to, with Nady up next, pitch very carefully to Floyd here with the open base and play the percentages righty against righty. Three and two to Floyd with two out. Pay off from right, pulled foul. Came with a breaking ball. Now the Mets have not run many deep counts tonight. They have not drawn a walk tonight. They didn't draw a single walk last night. And the Mets continue to struggle with a low on base percentage, third from the bottom in the National League. Three and two to Floyd. And he socks it to deep right. Forget it. That'll splash down in McCovey Cove. 
A bomb of a two-run homer for Cliff Floyd. Only his second home run of the year, and it's a monstrous shot into the water, retrieved by the kayaker, and it's 4-1 to New York. What a blast by Cliff Floyd. So Nady homers in the seventh to give the Mets the lead, and Floyd with a two-run bomb to put him up by three. Well, he tries to come in, or where's the catcher set up? Fastball, oh, it came back out over the plate a little bit. He didn't get it out enough. And Nady hits another one to deep center field. Back goes Wynn. He'll have room this time, and Wynn is there to make the catch. But the Mets put up a couple here in the eighth on Cliff Floyd's monstrous two run homer into McCovey Cove. They go to the bottom of the eighth, four to one New York. Jose Vizcaino leads off the home eighth against Juaner Sanchez. Uh, Jamie Wright almost made it through that eighth inning. But spent a lot of time and attention on David Wright and Cliff Floyd hit a bomb. And don't forget with two outs that play at first base on David Wright who was thrown out by a half step to end the inning. That kept the inning alive for Floyd's heroics. That's taking advantage of the break. Sanchez misses with a changeup one and two to Vizcaino. This gain a one for two. Traxel made a terrific defensive play to throw him out his last time up. Oh, that's a beautiful change. Sanchez with his first strikeout as he fans Viscaino. Let's listen to this. That's a bomb. You know it was because you see where the kayak was? The kayak guy knows where most of the home runs in the cove go, and he hit it. 75 feet past the kayak. He had to do a U-turn and go out and get it. Well, we're sitting up here and we're right behind home plate up pretty high. We knew as soon as it was hit that this baby was gone, and so did Cliff. And if Cliff can get going offensively, it would be a big lift for this club to get jump started. He's a very key man in this lineup, obviously. One and one to Matheny. You know he, he watched that ball but the problem is if you're the hitter you can't see where it comes down. <laughs> That's true but yeah. you have to look at the replay. But I, he was enjoying the arc of the baseball anyway. Well Cliff's been hitting so many balls as we said hard on this road trip it's like okay here catch that one. Two and one to Matheny who's 0 for 2 on the night. Now Sanchez behind three and one. Not a bad start. It won't look good in the paper for for Jamie Wright. His line's going to be eight innings, ten hits, four runs, but he pitched a good ball game. A couple of home run balls against his record. Wright waits on that second hop and throws out the slow-footed Matheny two away. So two out and nobody on. The Mets ticket marketplace is the easiest and best way to access premium seat locations at Shea. Sign up for your membership now at Mets.com. Members can purchase available prime club and box seats for single games directly from the Mets ticket marketplace. For more info, visit Mets.com today. There's Jeremy Accardo just called up from the minor leagues today, warming up in the Giants bullpen as Mark Sweeney will bat for the pitcher Jamie Wright. Sweeney pinch hit last night and struck out. He's coming back from a hamstring injury that has limited him the last few days. The Giants are a little short handed with Ray Durham banged up and with Sweeney unable to play the field right now. Sweeney veteran pinch hitter was with the Padres last year. And Sanchez behind again 2 and 0. Well, the Mets can get the next four outs in a row. Barry Bonds will not come to the plate. I don't think they don't know that. Paducah well, doing a little hand holding with Sanchez, who's had nothing but success so far this year. And how good does that trade look right now? Forget about 
what Sanchez has done. Look what is happening to Jay So with the Dodgers. He's getting lit up every time he goes to the mound. Don't know what's wrong with So, but Sanchez has been magnificent. Two and one to Sweeney. I'm telling you, when So came back into the rotation with the with the breaking ball, throwing more of the breaking balls, he went through the league once and was able to surprise everybody. Now everybody knows about it. Three and one to Sweeney. Well, that certainly is being borne out early in the season. To right field, in comes Nady. Diving can't get it, it's behind him. Sweeney will go to second. Chavez backing up nicely. It's a pinch hit double for Mark Sweeney. So Nady has made one outstanding play tonight. Couldn't quite get that one. Well, should have probably held up here with a three run lead. You keep the runner out of scoring position. Now we'll get a pinch runner for Sweeney. Brad Hennessy, a starting pitcher, is going to run for Sweeney, who is battling that hamstring problem. So Hennessy, a pitcher, runs for Sweeney. Randy Wynn bats with two out and a runner at second. And Billy Wagner starts to get himself cooking. And Wynn pops up the first pitch. Matsui has it, and the inning is over. So two scoreless innings from Dwaner Sanchez. And we go to the ninth in San Francisco. Mets four, Giants one. Steve Obermeyer with this Chevy Baseball Night New York update. The Devil Rays, the Yankees in the sixth. Runners on second and third for Jason Giambi. And Travis Lee can't get that. Two runs would score. The Yankees win a night game. 9-1 to over the Devil Rays. Red Sox and Indians in Cleveland. Eighth inning tied at five. Manny Ramirez stand and pose for that one. So much for the slow start. His batting average is now at 300. Red Sox win. Back to San Francisco. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez. We go to the ninth inning. Mets four, Giants one. Kaz Matsui will lead off against Jeremy Accardo, who has just called up for the second time this season. Giants put another reliever, Brian Wilson, on the disabled list and called up Accardo. And he's ahead of Matsui 0 and 1. Pretty good heater right there. He threw right first pitch. You see his numbers so far this year. He played last year in 28 appearances, it was 1 and 5. And it was tougher against lefties than against righties last year. And so he fouls it off. One of these straight gas attackers right here. He just brings it on up there. Picardo, a non-drafted free agent out of Illinois State, where he not only was the closer but played shortstop. Here's Billy Wagner getting set for his first save opportunity in a while. And Matsui fouls one back. Kaz Matsui has put together back to back two hit games. Also made that fine relay throw on the double play, throwing out Alou at third. One and two to Kaz. Andy Chavez waiting on deck. Jamie Wright went eight innings, allowed four runs and ten hits, didn't walk about or struck out four, but most importantly gave up the two home runs to Nady in the seventh and to Floyd in the eighth. And if we didn't know that it landed in the water, we'd think the Cliffs ball was still going. Ricardo strikes out Matsui, one away. So one out and nobody on top of the AOL game summary. Mets got a run in the first. Barry Bonds hit his 710th home run to tie it in the second. But then Nady and Floyd with the home runs late. As the Mets look to get just their third win in their last eight games. Leading 4-1. to one. Here's Chavez who's 0 for 2 in a sacrifice. Back to Accardo. Who plucks it. And makes the play two away.
Everybody in the NL East has lost tonight, so it's a chance for New York to pick up a game here. This would be four games in front of the division if they can win this one. Chris Woodward will bat for Duaner Sanchez, who did his job with two scoreless innings. In back of Steve Traxel, who stands to get his second win of the year. Traxel was terrific tonight. Willie Randolph pulled him for a pinch hitter in the top of the seventh, and that's worked out perfectly. Woodward fouls one off. You know, you're on the bench and you're a pinch hitter. <laughs> and it's a cold night, and you're watching this guy work. He's throwing 95% fastballs. You can't take a pitch when you pinch hit, and he throws you a wicked slider. And then another one, and it was very close. One and one to Woodward, who's hitting 238 on five for 21. Got some playing time in San Diego at second added shortstop. And Ricardo gets it over one and two. Well, the nice thing about this ballpark, if you're a reserve player on the road, as opposed to Candlestick, a Candlestick, once you got to that third base dugout, you were stuck for the entire game. Yes, you were. And if it was cold, you froze. On the outside corner, tipped by the bat of Woodward into the mid of Matheny. So it's a 1 2 3 inning for Accardo. We go to the last of the ninth, Wagner on to try to save it for New York. Mets baseball on Sportsnet New York has been brought to you by Ford. Check out the best selling Ford Explorer at a price that's even better, only at your Ford dealer. Jeep, the all new seven passenger Jeep Commander, it's your world, take command. And by Aflac, ask about it at work. Billy Wagner comes on to try and save it for New York. Omar Vizquel leads off of the Giants in the bottom of the ninth and takes high ball one. Wagner has not pitched since that second game in San Diego. Four days ago. Billy has four saves and five tries this year and he throws a strike to Vizquel at 97 miles an hour one and one. Well, that's what Met fans and that Met bench likes to see that that number up there 96. 97. He hasn't had it up that high all season. He threw a lot of sliders early in the year, and there's the slider to Vizquel, two and one. Billy had the finger problem during spring training that set him back a little bit in terms of arm strength. Barry Bonds do up third in the inning, so it's essential to keep the two ahead of him off base in a three-run game. Vizquel and Necro before Bonds. Skell who's had a hot bat has been held in check tonight. So right on one hop. And there's the first out of the last of the ninth. So Vizquel grounds out one away. And that means that Bonds cannot come to bat as the tying run. And that's the essential element for Wagner here in the bottom of the ninth. Barry will hit next behind Necro, who's one for three. And he misses inside of the fastball, 1 0. Oh. Day game tomorrow, 3 30 Eastern Time. Brian Bannister starts against Matt Morris. That's a change for the Giants. Popped it up. Matsui waiting for it to bring rain. Oh! And he staggers to make the play. That ball was hit eight miles high. So you get an idea here above the upper deck, in the upper stratosphere here, it gets windy. Well, Matsui was able to stay with it. I said this the other day. I think we've seen Matsui smile more this year than we did. In his first two years as a Met combined, just he, in the last week. He does seem more relaxed, and he's hitting 300. Well, here's Bonds, who accounted for the only giant run with a home run back in the second, and Wagner will challenge him in this spot. That was some serious cheddar right there, 97, and that. 97 miles an hour. Bonds is just two for 11 in his career against Wagner without a home run. Billy was saying yesterday what, how nice Bonds has been to him, how. When he was a young player, Bonds took him aside, talked to him for nearly an hour about life in the big leagues. And Billy also said, although he said he wouldn't like to be directly involved, he'd like to see Bonds break Aaron's record. He said it'd be good for the game. Yeah. 
One and one to Bonds. And now the Giants down to their final strike of the night. This is before the game, and you see Bonds and Wagner pretty tight. Sharing a laugh before the game. It's all business now for Billy. As he's one strike away from closing this one out. And you see what Wagner has done to keep Bonds in check. Now Wagner's one two throws him a slider and he fouls it off. Well that slider was not the slider he wanted to throw. Kind of backed up inside. Now Bonds has played this entire game. Despite cringing at times from pain in his knees we almost certainly will not see him tomorrow with a day game after a night game so I'm sure he wanted to finish this one out. Wagner ahead on Bonds one and two. Slider hit to right center playable. Chavez is there and the ball game is over. Billy Wagner pitches a 1 2 3 ninth to save it for Steve Traxel. Mets get home runs from Xavier Nady and Cliff Floyd to bomb the Giants and even up the series here at AT&T Park as the Mets take a 4 to 1 victory in game two of this series and they'll play the rubber game with Brian Bannister on the mound tomorrow afternoon. Well some 10 hits by the Mets which is a good sign for their offense and right there those two guys the name the, the the big guys in the game, Cliff with his shirt untucked. It's too cold to untuck your shirt. No, but, but it looks cool. Cliff, more importantly, so Cliff, Cliff has been struggling. Traxel gets his second win. Wagner gets his fifth save. Nady and Floyd with home runs for the Mets. Bonds hits number 710 for the only Giants run as the Mets get even in the series here in San Francisco. Cliff Floyd with the longest home run of the night. We'll be back in San Francisco in just a moment. Our final score tonight at AT&T Park, the Mets four and the Giants one. Steve Trax will get the second win, and Keith, uh, good to see the Mets offense back in gear tonight. Well, ten hits, as as you said, and the two, uh, more importantly, Cliff Floyd, the two-run home run in the eighth. He's been struggling. Once again, our final score, the Mets four, the Giants one. Be sure to join us for our next Sportsnet New York Mets broadcast tomorrow at 3.30 when the Mets play the rubber game of their series with the Giants. Now for Keith Hernandez, I'm Gary Cohen. Let's go to our New York studios with Steve Obermeyer and a look at what's coming up on Sports New York at 1 a.m.